Crawford here, psychologist, speaker, author of eight books, host of two PBS specials. Here again to bring you another tip on how to help you create the life you want. Specifically, how to use my life from the top of the mind philosophy to bring more clarity, confidence, creativity into everything you do. Today, I want to talk about the, the power of beliefs, specifically the neuroscience around the power of beliefs. Now, we all know beliefs are really important. I uh, did a search on Amazon for books on belief. I got 90,000 hits. <laughs> I did a Google search about beliefs. I got 1,750,000,000 hits. <laughs> so beliefs are true. You know, Henry Ford said, hey, whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. Uh, there's just a lot of stuff out there on beliefs. Think about Roger Bannister. He's the guy who broke the four-minute mile. Before Roger Bannister broke the four-minute mile, people didn't think it was possible. They didn't believe it was possible. After he broke the four-minute mile, people were breaking the four-minute mile just like this. They didn't get better all of a sudden. They just now believed it's true. Here's another example. Let's assume we have two people are in the room. One person is afraid of dogs. She's been a afraid of dogs almost all her life. Maybe she was bitten by a dog. Maybe her, her parents taught her that dogs were dangerous, but she believes dogs are dangerous. Second person in the room just loves dogs. Got about five dogs at home, believes dogs are God's gift to the universe. You bring a dog into the room. Fact. You got two different, totally re, uh, different reactions. The person that believes dogs are dangerous interprets this as a dangerous situation and just runs out of the room person that loves dogs goes, a dog, <laughs> goes to hug the dog. Now, here's the deal. It's the same dog. So it can't be the dog that's actually causing these two different reactions. It's their beliefs about dogs. Now, for those of you who follow my life from the top of the mind philosophy, you know, I believe everything we think and feel and do and say, how we react to others, how others react to us, all has to do with how the brain processes information. So we've got these three parts of the brain. The lower part of the brain is called the brain stem. Just call it the lower brain. The middle brain is called the limbic system. This is kind of the uh, interesting part because this is the part of the brain that gets the data first. It is the gatekeeper. It is the scanner, processor, router part of the brain. Upper 80% of the brain is called the neocortex. It's what I call the top of the mind. This is where we have access to our best interpersonal skills, problem-solving skills, clarity, confidence, creativity, etc. Now, here's the deal. Many of our beliefs about what is true are housed in this middle unconscious part of the brain. So if we're being influenced by beliefs, you know, traffic really, uh, really makes me mad or difficult people really piss me off or this particular politician is horrible, whatever. If we haven't chosen these beliefs on purpose, if we just kind of found ourselves believing them and then believe them because we believe them, that could be this middle brain housing unconscious beliefs that are ruling and influencing our experience of life. Now, doesn't mean that all unconscious beliefs are, are bad. Uh, I'm sure we grew up and inherited certain beliefs or learned things that we were growing up, you know, absolutely fine. But if there's some beliefs, these unconscious beliefs is specific, specifically coming from this middle brain that are influencing our life in a way that either has us running away from things that aren't dangerous, like maybe a dog, um, of thinking that something isn't possible, like the four-minute mile, or just kind of holding on to the righteousness of our perspective because we believe it's true, that may not be serving us. Uh, Peter Singe, in his book, The Fifth Discipline, one of his five disciplines is what he calls suspending beliefs. And I love that concept. We suspend them, we hold them up, and we look at them objectively and say, okay, um, am I missing anything? Is this true? Is this really working for me? So there are basically four qualities or, uh, qualities or characteristics or concepts, really, that I think we can use to bring the unconscious to consciousness so that we're making sure that any belief that is influencing our life is actually one that is serving us. So there are four questions. I call them the four criteria. I think we can use them as a criteria for deciding almost anything because they are kind of top of the mind questions. So number one, has this belief been chosen on purpose? We choose this belief or we just find ourselves believing this. And again, there are certain things we just find ourselves believing. Things are just fine. Number two, I love this one. How's it working for me? <laughs> you know, is this belief helping me create the life I want? 
Is this belief helping me be more effective in certain situations? Number three, is this how I want to be defined? Do I want to define myself as someone who believes traffic stresses me out? Difficult people piss me off. My kids' traffic drive me crazy. Those are all beliefs. Is that how I want to be defined? And probably maybe the fourth one and the most powerful one, would I teach or recommend this belief to someone I love? So if we've got beliefs that either, you know, we find ourselves believing that are fine, that are have, you know, maybe they're not chosen on purpose. They're helping us create the life we want. They certainly are uh, defining us the way we want to be defined. And yeah, we would absolutely uh, recommend these to someone we love. We want to hold on to those beliefs because remember, they're very powerful. They affect how we think and feel, how we interpret things, what we do next, the results we get, and then how we interpret the results. However, if we can look at Maybe some of those situations that maybe aren't serving us in life. You know, I, I talk about when I'm doing my seminars and in my books, I talk about understanding the problem triggers in our life, the difficult people, difficult situations that in the past have triggered us, have, have frustrated us. And then after we get really clear about the problem triggers, what are our problem reactions? How have we found ourselves reacting to these difficult people, difficult situations in the past that we want to have more influence over in the future? There's a gentleman by the name of Albert Ellis who came up with the ABC model. So if we call this problem triggers and we call this problem reaction. So it could be difficult people, could be traffic, could be bosses, could be spouses, could be kids, could be politics, could be email, whatever. And it could be stress, anxiety, frustration, annoyance, anger, resentment, whatever, any kind of reaction. So he calls this A for the adverse event and he calls this C for the consequence. This is the ABC model, by the way. He says the problem that so many people have, the trap that a lot of people fall into is they believe that A causes C. This person really makes me feel this way. This really makes me feel this way. He says the good news is A doesn't cause C because we don't want to be at the mercy of these difficult people, difficult situations in our life. He says A is filtered through B and B causes C. Now, when he came up with this model in the early 50s, B was beliefs. What we've now been able to do with MRIs is say B can also be what, where these beliefs are housed in a certain part of the brain. We can look at the neuroscience of beliefs and ask ourselves the question, have they been chosen on purpose? Are they really serving me? Is this how I want to be defined? Would I teach or recommend this to someone I love? And if the answer is no, then we can flip that and say, okay, so what if I were choosing a belief about this particular person, this particular situation? that is more purposeful, that does help me be more effective, that does define me, makes the statement I want to make about who I am. And in a way, I would teach or recommend to someone I love. What would that belief be? In my book, Life from the Top of the Mind, this is a part of a model that I believe can be used to, to create anything. So it's a five-step model, and it has us looking, the second step of the model has us looking at our beliefs. So there's a sentence completion that says, in the past, I believe that this made me feel this, and therefore I got resentful, angry, frustrated, or had self-doubt, whatever. In other words, there's a result from that. In the future, I want to see this as an opportunity to define who I am in a way that I would recommend to someone I love. So we change the difficult person and situation from the problem, make it part of the practice field. And that we, way we can begin to practice choosing our beliefs about this particular situation in a way that we would teach or recommend to someone we love. This is what I get to do. I get to go around the world teaching people the neuroscience of clarity, confidence, and creativity. The ABC model with B not only being beliefs, but B coming from a very specific part of the brain. How to actually rewire the brain. So this upper 80% of the brain, the neocortex, is now influencing how this middle brain is interpreting life. That puts us in a very powerful position to bring more clarity, confidence, and creativity into everything we do. So if you would like me to come and do this for your organization, your school, your church, you, I would love to do that. All you got to do is go to my website, BillCrawfordPhD.com, hit the contact button, let me know what you're interested in. Love to talk with you about that. In the meantime, here's to you bringing more clarity, confidence, creativity into everything you do. And I look forward to seeing you 
in the future.